Okay, uh, 3.15, prove a customized version of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, but this time instead of position and momentum, we're doing position and energy. And we wanna show specifically that the uncertainty or the product of the two uncertainties is always gonna be larger than or equal to this term h bar over 2m magnitude of the expectation value of p. And then furthermore, apparently for stationary states, this isn't necessarily very helpful, why? So let's start with solving this first part, which is to develop an uncertainty principle for position and energy. So per the generalized uncertainty principle, we know that the uncertainty squared of x and the uncertainty squared of h is going to be greater than or equal to the value of one over two i times the expectation value of the commutator of the operator x with the operator h. And then this whole thing squared. So the Hamiltonian operator is gonna equal p hat squared divided by two m plus v where this is pulled from here, right? This is just given to us. Uh, p hat can be further converted into negative h bar squared over two m times the second derivative with respect to x because p hat is just negative i h bar d by dx. And then we're adding v again, in which case if we wanna find the commutator, then this is gonna be the commutator of x with h hat is going to equal x because x is just x times negative h bar squared over 2m d squared by dx squared plus v acting on our arbitrary function f subtracted by negative h bar squared over 2m times d2 by dx squared plus v acting on x f like that okay so immediately what I see is that this term with this term cancels, right? Because that's just commutative or sorry, that's just distributive. So what we have next is negative x h bar squared over 2m d2 by dx squared acting on f and then subtracted by negative h bar squared over 2m d2 by dx squared acting on xf like that in which case these two negatives make a positive so this is going to be negative x h bar squared over 2m d2f by dx squared plus h bar squared over 2m d2 by dx squared of x times f at which point uh here we can just use you know uh, chain rule. So this term is going to equal the second derivative. Uh, so this is going to be, let's see, uh, d by dx acting on f plus x df by dx, which is going to equal furthermore uh, df by dx plus df by dx uh, plus x d2f by dx squared. So at that point, let's see, it's going to give me minus x h bar squared over 2m df by dx squared plus h bar squared over 2m two df by dx plus x d2f by dx squared. Okay, apologies, that was my cat screaming to get let out of my room. But uh, so at this point, uh, after distributing this over into everything, this term and this term just cancels, right? Negative h h bar, negative x h bar squared over two m over here x h bar squared over two m. So what we have left is h bar squared over two m times two df by dx. In which case, this two and this two cancels. We have h bar squared over m df by dx. Okay, so now we can shove this back in, right? So because this is going to equal the commutator of x and h hat. So if we shove that back in, 
up here in this equation, which I'm going to pull back down, then we should get our answer. But note here that they want our answer in terms of momentum, not in terms of position. So what we can do is we can redefine this in terms of the momentum operator. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. Redo. Okay, yeah, because we know that p hat is equal to negative i h bar d by dx, in which case this implies that d by dx is just going to equal p hat divided by negative i h bar, right? So in that case, sigma x squared sigma h squared is going to be greater than or equal to 1 over 2i multiplied by the expectation value of p hat, or sorry, got ahead of myself a little bit, uh, h bar squared over m times p hat over negative i h bar, like that, in which case one of these h bars cancels with one of these h bars at the top. The i and i make a negative one, which becomes a positive one, so this is going to be one half expectation, let's see, the m comes out because that's just a constant, so it's just 1 over 2m times the expectation value of p hat squared. And at this point, well, uh, we can just get rid of the squared, right, and just redefine our uh, uncertainty principle. So sigma x, sigma h, because I just take the square root on both sides, is going to be greater than or equal to 1 over 2m. And over here, we do actually need to include a magnitude term for the p hat when we do this, because otherwise, you know, p hat can be technically negative. And in that case, this equation would make no sense, because remember, this term has to always be positive. Uncertainties always have to be positive. You can't have negative uncertainties. So in order to sort of uh, resolve that conflict, we just attach this arbitrary absolute value term at the front. And with that, we are done. We've obtained the answer that we're looking for for this first part, which is this, right? Uh, oh, I'm missing an h bar. Let's see. Ah, yes. I left out the h bar over here, so there's actually that h bar still comes out. So h bar over 2m magnitude expectation value p. Now, finally, it says that for stationary states, it doesn't necessarily help us very much. Why not? And if we think back to you know section 1.5. We know that for stationary states, the expectation value of p is actually equal to just zero. So this just doesn't tell us anything, right? Because back in 1.5, we learned that you know the expectation value of p, if we actually calculated it, is going to be m times d by dt of the expectation value of x, right? Because momentum equals mass times excel. Uh, momentum equals mass times velocity, and velocity is the derivative of x with respect to time. So in that case, this is going to equal m times d by dt, and strictly according to the expectation value formula from chapter 1, the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of x magnitude psi squared dx, right? And this integral, specifically, we found was going to always equal 0. Or sorry, not the integral, but this term is always going to be equal 0, because this has no time dependency, this has no time dependency, so a derivative with respect to time is just going to give us zero. So in that case, well, for a stationary state, this is basically saying that the product of the uncertainties of position and energy is always going to be greater than equal to zero, and obviously that's true, so this doesn't help us. And with that, we are done with this problem.